My name is Michael Pauline. I'm an architect. I worked on the Eden project for quite some time uh, when I was at Grimshaw and then I set up my own company Exploration seven years ago and we're focusing ex exclusively on biomimicry. And biomimicry is really about looking to nature as a source of inspiration for new design solutions. So it's, it's actually about understanding how functions are delivered in biology and then seeing how those can inspire new ways that suit human needs. The great thing about biomimicry is it draws on a source of solutions that have been refined through 3.6 billion years of evolution, or as some people call it, 3.6 billion years of research and development. And so what you can find in biology is an amazing storehouse of design ideas. Because biomimicry draws on an amazingly refined set of solutions, it offers a lot of clues for how we can address some of the key challenges that we need to address over the next few decades. So things like resource shortages, addressing climate change, essentially doing things in much more efficient ways, so using far less resources, and also shifting from a kind of linear metabolism of a city into a closed loop one. And by a closed loop metabolism, I mean one in which all the resources are stewarded within closed loop cycles, and we gradually design out the whole concept of waste. One of the things I find really inspiring about biomimicry is it pushes us to find a, a new paradigm that is beyond sustainability, I would say, and is more of a sort of restorative or regenerative paradigm. So it's about creating internal environments that are, actually make people healthier and more productive. There's a huge range of possibilities, and we discovered this uh, really when we were working on our recent project, it's called the Biomimetic Office. And so, for instance, quite apart from some of the very clear functional challenges, there were examples of biomimicry that helped us address some of the kind of behavioral uh, ways in which people live in buildings. So, for instance, there's a concept called Dunbar's number. Uh, Robin Dunbar is a primatologist and he studied optimum group sizes in primates. And actually, it seems though the same sort of rules apply to clusters of, of humans. So, this office building we designed, each of the floor plates was designed so that it could accommodate roughly the same number of people as Dunbar's number. Uh, so that is a, an optimum number of people for a really well-functioning um, business. Currently we're working on a large factory building in India, so creating a fantastic working environment for the staff with lots of natural light and views to the outside. And one of the main sources of inspiration here has been the idea of hierarchical structures in biology. And perhaps the clearest way of describing that is with the example of the Eiffel Tower. So what you see in the Eiffel Tower is the structure subdivided into trusses. And then if you look at each member within those trusses, those are subdivided and then subdivided again. And those are called levels of hierarchy. And with each level of hierarchy, you get increasing resource efficiency, so it's using less material. The aim with the factory in India is, is partly about making it very resource efficient, so using less energy, less material resources, and also it's about creating a really fantastic environment for the, the people that work there. The specifics of a particular location should influence the, the kind of examples you look at in biomimicry in order to arrive at a solution that's perfectly suited to that location. So different climatic regions will uh, require different solutions. And there's a good example of an office building and shopping center in Harare, not far from the equator. And that was designed, uh, inspired by termites actually. So it was designed without any air conditioning. Biomimicry has huge potential to rethink cities. So far, it hasn't really been adopted in anywhere near the same degree that it could. And I think the, the best opportunities are actually where you can look at a whole master plan for a whole area. And particularly urban master planning, if you can start to look at all the infrastructure and the, the water, waste, food and energy, you can start to achieve the same sort of efficiencies that you see in real ecosystems. If you can get those systems all connected up together so that the, the waste from one becomes the nutrient for something else in that, that's when you start getting the real breakthroughs.